I'm Professor Katie Hind at Arizona State University and founding director of March Mammal Madness. This video is to orient educators to the resources available to enhance the learning opportunities for using the tournament with your students. Other videos within the series are going to address aspects of playing the tournament, uh, key details for 2023, and taking you behind the scenes inside the tournament to understand how winners are determined and how stories are crafted. Let's begin. The LibGuide has a page dedicated to educators. This is going to be a central hub for you to get access to lesson plans, worksheets, education guides, uh, a number of resources, and access to other educators' resources throughout the pre-tournament season and during the tournament. These resources are provided as an open educational resource, and most all of them are downloadable in editable form so that you can modify them for greatest use with your learners. The LibGuide also has dedicated pages for learners based on age-specific resources for doing research about their combatants, for seeking uh, reliable images and artwork of species, and a number of other really cool science uh, sources, guides, and other kinds of portals that we've curated specifically for your learners. In the decades since the launch of the tournament, one of the biggest areas of systematic growth is in the expansion of our educator resources for using Marshmallow Madness with your learners in both formal and informal settings. We now provide editable lesson plans for the life sciences and social sciences, as well as other disciplines or study subjects. We also include a lesson plan to help all US fourth graders sign up for their free parks pass as part of the Every Kid Outdoors program run by the US government. Our annual survey of educators has revealed that the majority of educators are using the tournament embedded within their curriculum, not just as bell work or extra credit. And indeed, we have designed the tournament as we've moved on in time to focus on a lot of topics that are in next generation science standards, such as the tree of life, adaptations, ecosystem dynamics, human impacts, and other life science standards. One of the common times that teachers uh, create assignments for their students in conjunction with March Middle Madness is during the weeks between when the bracket drops and the tournament begins. During this three week period, their uh, students can research the combatants, justify their predictions, argue from evidence, and really engage in a lot of understanding about the natural history of these species. Many teachers have students do presentations uh, about the different combatants as posters or slides, and sometimes deliver an oral presentation to their classmates so that everybody can have systematic information about all of the combatants. These assignments can be adjusted for educational levels and students can be tasked with researching aspects of the combatants that are most relevant for the current curricula that you're using with your learners. We've also expanded beyond the life sciences. Studies of student learning demonstrate that combining art and science education often improves learning outcomes, and the tumbling blocks art assignment and the haiku assignment are directly related to these kinds of pedagogical tools. The tumbling block assignment particularly allows for a visual representation of students' predictions and or the information about the different combatants. Additionally, one of the language arts lessons plans is for crafting a haiku, a poetry tradition that has often showcased the natural world and allows teachers to uh, reveal that one of the great masters of haiku dating back to the Edo period in Japan was herself a teenager. One of the things that we've learned about the bracket aspect and game elements of the tournament that bring together knowledge and information about science within this kind of game format is that it, it compels students to consider multiple contingencies and engage in integrative complexity. Through discussion and debate in small groups, students can scaffold information and learning together. We've also heard back from educators that this tournament enables broader life lessons. Things like each organism has special traits for solving its challenges, that there is no universally perfect strategy in all situations, and that some of our predictions turn out to be right and some do not. But even when we didn't predict perfectly, we have opportunities to learn and grow. All of these can really help students with emotion regulation, decision making, thinking about information, and understanding that each of us is special in, in, in particular ways, and that's worth celebrating. 
So make sure that you bookmark the ASU March Mammal Madness LibGuide and check early and often for updates, new resources, more dialogues from other teachers, and a number of resources, including certificates self celebrating your students' participation in the tournament, uh, as this has become, I think, a really important hub for all the resources. These are now also systematically organized to be more user-friendly for the many different user uh, stakeholder groups that use March Mammal Madness for fun, for learning, for a variety of reasons. Thank you.